So if I was born before 2,500 years ago, this is the temple that would be dedicated to me. This is the temple of Hercules. Vespa rides, city guides, and a lot of, uh, interesting food. Welcome to our ultimate Italian road trip. We're Matteo and Misha, the global expats. With our good looks and charming personality, along with our obsession with food and history, we're taking you through all 20 regions of Italy and showing you the unique things they have to offer. And we've started off in Sicily. In our last episode, we got the full chocolate experience in Modica, as we indulged in their famous hot chocolate, beef and chocolate empanadas. If any cookie had to ever be confused, it'll be this one. And tried uniquely infused samples at the world's first chocolate aging storage. Whoa. Oh, and there's the kick. <laughs> Today, we take a trip back in time as we explore the ruins of the ancient Greek city of Akragas, known today as the Valley of the Temples in Agrigento. We take you on a tour of its most famous sites as we try to imagine what life was like for its people 2,500 years ago. We are so excited because the weather has cleared up. The sky is blue. We don't know how long it's gonna last for, but that means that we get to go see Agrigento and the Temp Valley of Temples. So we're on our way. We're only just down the road from it and we're very excited. Welcome to Matteo and Misha's tour of Agrigento where you won't be getting an in-depth study of archaeology except you will be getting the summarized version of the beautiful ruins that have been sitting here for around about 2,500 years. Please feel free to leave donations in the tip jar at the bottom <laughs> in the form of pizza because there's a donate us a pizza button below and if you enjoy it please leave a comment and for all the historians out there they're going to correct my facts over the course of the day Feel free to leave those as well. Thank you. But make sure they are constructive and not just, Mateo, you're wrong, because that doesn't help. And please keep your hands and feet inside the carriage at all times. <laughs> So on the map, this place doesn't look that big. But now that we're actually here, this place looks that big. It looks crazy massive, like two kilometers to walk to the other side, then like a kilometer inland to go to the museum, like two kilometers back. At least it's not the middle of summer. All you poor souls are gonna come in August, huh? Maybe bring like an umbrella, hat, some sun cream, bottle of water, extra water boy car like they do in the Tour de France. <laughs> Behind me is the temple of Dioscuri. Like most of the stuff in this park, it was built around 5th century BC. And it's just crazy to think because that was once a massive temple. And right now it currently looks like it is actually being kind of held up and having to be put back together, which is also a crazy thought because from what I understand, this park hasn't been open for that long. So out of the 2,500 years that this has been standing here, we have this small period, this small time frame in history whereby we can actually come and see this stuff before it actually gets taken by the elements because I mean, this can't stand here forever. Eventually, someday, it's going to all fall down and if you get a chance to come and see it, it's definitely a part of history that should not be skipped. So if you come here and you don't want to do a guided tour, there's actually an app, it's called Valley of the Temples. And as you go to each site, there's about a minute of information that you can either read or you hit play and it's read to you. So when you're at each site, it gives you the history and the information in a pretty concise and easy to understand way. And that's how we are doing it today. The name of this temple built around 450 to 440 BC. The city of Agrigento was once a great 
Greek settlement in 580 BC called Akragas. And in 1997, the Valley of the Temples was made into an UNESCO World Heritage Site. And this is the Garden of Columbaphra. And it has an abundance of olives, almonds, as well as citrus, if I'm not mistaken. This end of the Hill of the Temples was entirely occupied by a large shrine dedicated to the worship of the Catholic deities, extending across three contiguous terraces. Agrigento is part of an area in southern Italy called Magna Graecia. They got that name from the Romans, and it refers to the areas in southern Italy that had an extensive population of Greek settlers. And I do love a good view. So as we are walking through here, we have a gorgeous view of the coast and the sun is shining. No more Medicaid. <laughs> Between the 5th and 6th century BC, this area was a place of crazy construction and you can tell in this sacred area that they built a lot of stuff. And for size reference, remember how I said it's a far walk around? This area, Acragas, Agrigento, had a 12 kilometer long wall. So you can imagine, and it had nine entrances. It was that big. Acragas was founded in the year 580 BC and starting from then it grew from a small settlement to a large city-state with a population of over 200,000 people. A lot of the monuments that were built here were built within the first hundred years that the city had been founded. However, just over a hundred years later, in 406 BC, the entire area was destroyed by the Carthaginians. The Carthaginians sacked and destroyed most of the city. However, 200 years later in 210 BC the Romans moved in and when the Romans arrived they defeated the Carthaginians in the two Punic Wars and the Romans renamed the city of Acragas to Agrigentum and after they took control over it they started developing new public buildings including two more temples a theater and a couple other little Roman buildings This big stone guy behind me is one of the telemons of the Temple of Olympian Zeus. And from my understanding, feel free the historians in the comments that we had in our suggestive video to correct me, but they don't know the exact function of why these guys are here. From what they understand, they might've been built when the Carthaginians were defeated in a battle in 480 BC and created it as like a remembrance to their defeat as an in humiliation so that they don't repeat the same thing but each guy is made out of 12 big blocks of limestone. So this is what the telemon looks like and the red parts are where they kind of had to put it back together because they found it missing those parts, but they were close by. So they just put them back in place. The altar of the temple of Olympian Zeus. Brief summary. This is where they sacrificed a hell of a lot of animals for the gods and it was always done so with the rising sun facing the rising sun at dawn. And you can still kind of see where the staircase leads up to the main altar where they used to actually kill the animals. This area just has a whole bunch of ruins lying around. And from what I understand, this was the Temple of Zeus, estimated to be the length of a football field and 10 stories high. Must have been absolutely massive. And it's pretty cool because you can see a part of one of the top of the pillars. And for reference, that is around about the size of a small car, if I had to calculate it correctly. Behind me is a deep groove cut into the rock known as the Golden Gate 
and archaeologists think that this was the main road going from the city to the port and today it is used as the main road and there's a modern walkway crossing from one side of the valley of the temples to the other it's insane to see how massive each one of these pieces is these things were so big it's like almost hard to comprehend how they built things this large <laughs> This is just one chunk, pretty much as tall as me. So if I was born before 2,500 years ago, this is the temple that would be dedicated to me. This is the temple of Hercules. Known for his superhuman strength and being the son of the god Zeus and the mortal Alcamini, this is probably the oldest temple here in the area. And archaeologists know that because it has 15 side pillars instead of the usual 13, making it part of the more archaic Doric temples, as well as six on the front, making the proportions a little bit off to be one of the more classical temples that are in this area. Look at this view! What you are looking at right now is the Temple of Concordia, famous for being one of the best preserved temples of the entire Greek world. The reason this temple is so well preserved is because at the end of the 6th century AD, it was turned into a Christian church. And so when it was turned into a church, the upkeep of it stayed there. And so it didn't just dissolve with time. Even when it stopped being a church, they tried to reconvert it back into a Greek temple. However, some of the stuff was lost with time. A fun little fact about this temple is that the name Concordia has absolutely no connection to the temple. When they discovered the temple, they found a little plaque lying near it. And they just kind of linked the one to the other. And apparently that is incorrect as it belongs to something completely different. If you've seen any photos of the Valley of the Temples, then this sculpture behind me will stand out to you. The statue is of Icarus and it was donated by the Polish sculptor Igor Mitoraj. And if you saw our Noto video and you saw all those sculptures in the front of the Duomo, then this is by the same Polish artist. And if you know the story of Icarus, it is that his father told him not to fly close to the sun. And so that is exactly what he went and did like most of our teenagers nowadays and his wings were held together by wax and so when he flew close to the sun they melted he fell into the mediterranean and died even though the city of Akragas was founded 2500 years ago it was only at the end of the 18th century that it was rediscovered by european travelers i guess and archaeological searches that were trying to find something new to document and it was only in the year 2000 that this archaeological park was actually opened. On this side of me there are the south walls of the city of Akragas and these are some of the oldest in Sicily as well as being 12 kilometers long they were built in this position facing the ocean as the slope of this hill was the easiest to 
kind of climb up and so it was the one that needed the most defense. This is the temple of Juno, or Hera's temple. Much like most of the ruins in this area, have been given conventional names just for that reason, as there is no historical evidence that matches why they have these names. However, what is interesting about this one is that at the end of the 18th century, when they found this area, a lot of this temple is actually reassembled in a way. And so they found it more in pieces and they actually put it together a little bit to make it resemble what it did back in the past. This is probably one of the most incredible viewpoints we have had in Sicily. And I know we say that in a few places, but this definitely is one of the top places because not only do you have this ancient temple, you have the view of the sea, you have the view of the new city, which contrasts the ancient temple, and you have the sweeping green valleys. It's a 360 degree view. It's incredible. And so that concludes our tour here of the Valley of the Temples. And also, by the way, this is not the only stuff you can see. There's so much more to it, but we are running out of time. There's a museum, there's a Christian route you can take, a Roman route. Like, there's different tombs and sacrificing areas that you can do. And we just don't have time for that right now. But if you want to see the main stuff, then that's the stuff we showed you today. And we have some tips. So when you park your car, they offer a three euro per person taxi service that basically drives you to the other end of the ruins. Where there's another gate. Where there's another gate and you can start your tour there and make your way up this way. And then when you end, you're at the parking lot. The entrance ticket costs 12 euros and that gives you basic access to the park minus the museum and the garden, which cost extra. It took us about three hours to walk through, but we were filming. So if you're just coming for a visit, probably about two hours would be enough. And then some time for the museum or the gardens. If you want to see those. If you want to see those. And we highly recommend using the app that we showed you because if you don't want to do a guided tour, it's awesome to just every time you're out of sight, it guides you through and tells you all the information you need to know so you are not just looking at a pile of rocks and you actually understand what they were once upon a time. In our next episode, we take a short drive from the Valley of the Temples to the famous Turkish Steppes.